Hello boys and girls, brothers and sisters, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna do an affordable watch today. It's a 1950s diver's watch from the well-known brand Crystal Watch. We see the case is called plated and the dial says uh, Swiss made while the back says uh, Great Britain and it's got a Timex uh, logo in the middle. So it's obviously not uh, made to go with this watch. And we see the crown has uh, worn off the gold plating. And uh, nothing happens if we try to wind the watch. We cannot set the hands. So something is absolutely wrong here. First thing we always want to do is uh, have a look at the time graph. Let's uh, do that. Is this thing on? Oh, there was a signal. So the watch is not running. We cannot move the hands, doesn't look too good. Let's uh, open it and see what's uh, hiding inside. Uh oh. And this is how we can tell it's a diver's watch seen a lot of water the question is really what can we do about this now the most important thing when you get a watch like this is uh, the balance if the balance actually does uh, run does uh, oscillate properly then that's a really good sign might mean it's possible to do something about the watch. The other question is uh, how deep the rust goes. Now what's important to remember is that uh, most of the parts in the watch are probably made of brass in these old watches. You will find uh, steel in the keyless works, uh, some of the wheels, uh, the pinions, But what that means is that a lot of the rust is going to be very superficial apart from on the pivots and on some of the wheels where you have uh, steel parts. So we'll probably have to replace some of those uh, parts, but uh, we'll see. This is a watch that I'm doing most for fun to see what's possible. It's not a watch I would ever sell or charge anything for. But that said, uh, the movement is a nice movement. It's a Felsa 4002. You might have seen on the jewel and also on the rotor it says 25 joules. And that is pretty high end for uh, this era. So let's hope we can uh, get something out of this. We're not uh, willing to spend uh, almost any money on this. So uh, what needs to be replaced, we want to do that as cheaply as possible. Ideally nothing. So the movement has this uh, pocket watch style eccentric uh, case screws. And uh, the movement comes out of the front. We saw that the bezel actually comes off a little bit too easily. We're not going to worry about that too much right now. Let's just get the dial off. And then we can put the crown and the stem back in. 
not sure it's any point because nothing seemed to move too much. We see we can actually operate the crown in uh, time setting mode, but still not in uh, winding mode. So let's first get uh, the cannon pinion off. That way we can take all the train off on the other side. Well, can and can. If it's not rusted shut, we can. Theoretically, we can. But uh, this rotor is proving very difficult to get off. You will find this uh, type of rotor attachment in uh, quite a lot of older watches. There's this uh, little lever that's supposed to uh, expand the metal ring underneath the rotor to lock it in place. Which uh, typically works quite well, but um, this one is probably rusted shut. To get uh, this kind of rust off, there are of course a few different things you can try to use. What you saw me put on this uh, liquid is uh, something called uh, Schraubenlöser from uh, Boli. But of course all material houses have something similar. You can also try uh, WD-40 or something similar. What's important is to not be too impatient. It is not too difficult to uh, rip a screw head off the screw and then you have more problems. So after using one of these uh, screw loose things, just let it uh, work for a little bit. Now we finally got it off. As you might have seen, I was uh, thinking perhaps we could circumvent it by loosening the screws or taking out the screws on this automatic bridge. But that's actually not possible on this movement. The rotor is in the way, if you will. The automatic works is uh, covered by this uh, one uh, thin plate that has uh, three screws. And there are three separate screws that actually uh, secure this whole uh, bridge to the movement. We're going to try to loosen up all these screws. At this point, I'm uh, a little bit like, what the did I get myself into? Right, so we're getting this uh, plate off, maybe. To continue on this uh, question of what to do with rusted screws, if WD-40 or this uh, screw loose kind of uh, chemicals don't work, you can of course try to uh, ultrasound uh, clean the uh, part or the movement uh, where the screws are loose. If you do so, then uh, take out the balance first. I would recommend. And if that doesn't work, then you can also try heat. Just be careful you don't uh, have open heat and flammable uh, chemicals. 
and the last thing, the last resort basically is to uh, drill the screw out. And when I'm saying drill the screw out, you don't necessarily need to drill the whole screw out. If you drill a rather small hole in the center of the screw, then you should be able to actually uh, screw the screw out because you'll release the pressure on the sides of the screw hole. So you should be able to screw it if you still have the thread intact. All right, so we got uh, the automatic uh, bridge with the works on it on top out. Felsa was of course famous for the bidinator uh, automatic system. This one does not use that system, but it's a little bit similar. It's actually a pretty neat system. So we'll look at that in uh, the assembly video. It's not very efficient, but it's very simple. Before we go any further, let's take the balance out, put it safely away. And what you'll uh, see is that for all this part, we need to really inspect them to see if they are, let's say, intact. We can see that the pallet fork also works. There is some power on the movement, apparently, because it does flick from side to side. So while we let uh, the screw loose and the chemicals try to loosen the screws on the train side, we uh, flip the movement over. And we can basically strip down the calendar works. It's a pretty straightforward calendar uh, mechanism on this watch. It has no quick set function at all. And a rather interesting uh, date jumper. It's just a little disc uh, that's pressed on by the spring. And the date uh, wheel itself is also pretty rudimentary. There's that little date jumper disc. The setting lever spring has a pretty elegant design and is secured by a big screw. Otherwise also very straightforward keyless works. All right, so we've given the screw loose a little bit time to work. So we see now a few more of the screws actually do come out. So we can take the setting lever off and then the sliding pinion and the winding pinion. Now, since we saw that there is power on the mainspring, but we cannot let it down because the uh, click spring has completely rusted. What we're going to do is uh, simply use our finger to gently let down uh, the mainspring by uh, pressing on the third wheel. Of course, when you do this, uh, be very gentle. We see there's still a little bit uh, power left. And since the movement is so dirty, we're also going to take off this uh, cap uh, jewel on the escape wheel. 
and then we can take off the train bridge and what's behind door number three is there more rust Making sure there's no power left. We don't want the wheels to fly away. All right, actually, it looks pretty okay. is that uh, these are brass pieces and they're also a bit farther away from the stem because what you will see with uh, watches that have uh, water damage like this is that it's typically the crown and the stem uh, that's the entry point and then of course you will have most of the rust around the crown and the stem And you can see the barrel. It wasn't originally black. So that's our diver friend who has uh, recolored the barrel unintentionally. Some of these screws were really hard to get off. There's a lot of resharpening of screwdrivers and more uh, screw loose and from both sides most bridge screws go uh, through the movement so you can also loosen it from uh, the uh, other side if needed So while we're waiting for uh, the screw loose to work a little bit more, we can uh, look at uh, the train bridge. You can see that uh, the crown wheel is underneath the train bridge. It's a nice solution that was pretty popular uh, back then. And we see there's quite a lot of rust. There should actually be a shim around this post, but it's yeah pretty stuck. We're going to clean it a little bit first and then see if we get it off. So this is the cover plate for the automatic works. You see this uh, lever has rusted completely off. So there are two main options to deal with that. One is to replace it and the other is to use some black magic. I'm not sure which I prefer to be honest. Let's find out in part two. And where we're working now, there is actually a screw there. And that screw is to hold this little lever in place. And this uh, lever is to uh, hold those two little pinions in the automatic works in place. As they move back and forth to pick up the different uh, directions uh, of the rotor. We'll see that in more detail in the assembly video. But for this lever, I'm honestly leaning towards black magic. I'm also not uh, taking super glue and duct tape uh, off the table. Oh, that used to be the eye of the lever where the screw goes in. So this is easily the worst uh, affected part we've seen so far. But we'll keep looking. And here we have the 
intermediate wheel. And the winding wheel. And we see there's a lot of rust here. Let's just take off uh, the post for the rotor as well. Also something is uh, typically not at all necessary. But there could be some rust uh, where it meets the brass. Let's take it off and clean it. when I say clean it, that's where all those hours of doing my wife's manicure really uh, pays off. Cuticles and rust is almost the same. You use pegwood in both. Let's see if we can get this um, barrel bridge off. We've gotten one screw off, but the other one is uh, the same one that's also holding the click down and it's rusted shut. But finally, it comes out. Oh, that feels good. Let's see. Yeah. I would like to say that's cosmetic only, but uh, does not look too good. But we don't want to invest a lot in this watch, so let's see uh, what we can do. Last bridge to come off is for the center wheel. took the barrel lid off. You'll find this type of barrel in some old watches as well, where there is no actually a barrel arbor. It's part of the lid. That makes it a lot more difficult actually to replace the mainspring, unless you have a new mainspring. But let's see if we can use this one. We can also see that this is an old style mainspring, so this watch has not been serviced for uh, probably a generation or two. And I'm talking about uh, turtle generations. But the spring actually does uh, have some power in it still. Now the eagle-eyed observer might have seen that uh, the mainspring is a non-automatic mainspring. And this is the reason. This is a separate brake spring that is coiled inside the barrel and uh, yeah, breaks against the barrel wall. So if you want to replace the mainspring in this uh, kind of barrel, you can either put in a new automatic mainspring or you can use this brake spring together with a new manual wind mainspring. All right, let's see now what we can do about these parts. We see quite a few of the screws are very rusted. Most of them are actually in usable condition, but some are not. So let's put away the ones we can use. And then we'll have to try to find some that fit for the rest. 
for the bigger parts we're going to use peg wood first get off as much rust as we can and then we're going to run it through the cleaner and see uh, what kind of magic that does the parts will never be exactly as new we'll see the rotor will have this little bit of discoloration but uh, rust doesn't actually attack brass so it's more cosmetic than uh, anything functional This is about the speed I uh, clean my wife's uh, toenails. Because there's a limit to how long I can hold my breath while I do that. So, you know, it's kind of important to work fast. A couple of these wheels are probably too far gone, but let's clean them and put them through the cleaning machine. We're going to see uh, how many of these parts we can reuse. Especially the barrel lid is uh, very damaged. We're going to put uh, this through the cleaning machine. And then we'll see what it looks like when it comes out. And then we can reassess a little bit more which uh, parts we uh, need to replace. Most of the time we can get away with uh, keeping almost everything. But definitely not all of it in this case. That will be in part two, however. If you like this video, please uh, click like and subscribe. You can always follow us on social media, on our website, and also on Chrono24. Until next time, thanks for watching.